Hi, I'm Mike Graham, and welcome to Tech Talk. Today, we're going to be taking a look at fixture types and applications of which those fixtures would normally go into. Uh, by fixture types, we're going to be defining the differences between washes, beams, hybrids, and spots. Um, and we're also going to talk about different size jobs and installations of where you would use different size fixtures to best fit those applications. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, th so throughout the presentation, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and type those in. Uh, we'll make sure and answer them for you. Uh, the more interactive this is, the more fun it is for everybody. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start taking a look at wash lights. Wash lights are coverage fixtures. They're designed to spread as much light as possible over a stage or a space. Because wash lights also have zoom, doing coverage of small and isolated space is no problem, and you can do wide floods as well. Because wash lights have a nice soft focus, uh, they're designed to blend well with each other. Um, as you can see with the MK3 wash there, uh, it also does do very, very tight effects as well, uh, which come into play if you're trying to do aerial effects with this fixture. It's great. Chevet has a variable white fixture as well. This is the R2X VW. This fixture has got a ton of preset color temperatures already built into it. These are all preset, so if you do want to use the presets, totally cool, or you can dial these in yourself. The peak output when the, when the warm white and cool white are at full is about 4,000K, which is ideal for shooting in HD. We also have the Rogue R1 Beam Wash. This fixture is designed to give you nice colors in both a wider and more narrow applications. Uh, this fixture is also super fast in movement. So it's a great application fixture for everything from beam effects to wash effects uh, and to be able to whip, whip through the room. It's just a great overall fixture. So taking a look at spot fixtures, Spot fixtures are a more precise lighting instrument. They're designed to cover a specific object in a space. Um, spot fixtures always have color in them. Uh, we're looking at the Rogue R3 spot and the MK1 spot in the Maverick family. Uh, the MK1 offers CMY color mixing. R3 spot is two color wheels. Um, either way, you have the ability to cast color onto your stage pretty easily. You have a little more color option with the CMY color mixing, of course, but you do have options as well with just a color wheel. With a color wheel, doing split colors is, is a neat effect sometimes. Spot fixtures always have gobos in them. Uh, typically, you have uh, static and rotating gobos, depending on the fixture you choose. These are just some patterns that are built into these fixtures here. You typically have an iris. Irises are great for narrowing down on a specific object, so if you do need to go tighter than the narrow zoom, uh, this is a way to achieve that. Prisms are great for adding a little bit more texture to your space. Again, all spot fixtures typically do have prisms and static gobos as well as frost. Some fixtures you'll see a heavier frost, some fixtures just a lighter frost. It all depends on your application. Another type of spot fixture is the profile. In Chevet speak, a profile is a fixture that has framing shutters in it. Uh, these framing shutters for, for us always do rotate, so you do have the ability to, to move those framing shutters as you need. Uh, this gives you the ability to better cut off um, objects if you need to, so no matter how the fixture is oriented, you'll be able to find an angle to be able to cut off from a door frame or scenic elements that you don't want light on. Um, this gives you the ability to do that. Um, it also gives you the ability to make, make some pretty cool layered effects. Uh, this was done right here with just a uh, gobo wheel, animation wheel, a little bit of color, um, and framing in the effect so that if I wanted to cut this off of the door frame, I could do that very easily. So again, guys, as we're going through this, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add those in. Taking a look at beam fixtures, 
Uh, beam fixtures are great for cutting through video wall effects. Uh, they're also amazing for aerial effects. So as we drop in uh, prisms and gobos, uh, you can see that we're building some really cool aerial effects with these. So again, filling up a space with effects like this is very easy with fixtures like this. Going through a couple different gobos here, so you can get kind of a feel for what this would look like in the air. One of the cool things about this fixture is that it has two prism wheels that can be overlaid to give you some much larger effects. Uh, it gives you the ability to put more dots in, into space um, and give yourself some bigger and, and larger effects. Um, because this fixture does have a bunch of reducer gobos in here as well, uh, you can just do like aerial dot effects, which are kind of cool. And anything that can mix it up, this fixture is great for. If you do need a narrow pin spot, uh, this fixture is perfect for that, as it does is it is a beam, so making those effects is very easy for it. Um, we also have a frost on this, so if you do want to uh, do some softer edge effects, again, no problem. Taking a look at hybrids. Hybrids are pretty cool because they are a combination of all three of their previous types. You have spot, beam, and wash all built into one fixture. You can take this fixture down nice and narrow to create beam effects and come out pretty wide to go ahead and do some gobo looks. Right now we're at the medium zoom range of this fixture in the, in the spot function. That's the narrow range again. Uh, we can go ahead and see we have got some prisms in here. This is the linear prism. We can overlap the round prism on top of that to create some more dynamic looks. And we can zoom that out way wide um, and cover a huge amount of space and still maintain a very cool look. Uh, this is the wide zoom on spot. So as you can see, coverage again for an effect is no problem at all. So doing those long throw things are no problem. You're going to get great coverage. Bring it down nice and tight for those beam effects. And then rolling into the beam, uh, as you can see, it's nice and tight. So doing aerial effects like this are no problem. Doing those searchlight looks. This is a static gobo wheel. Again, we can go ahead and roll it back into those prisms again. You have your linear and then rolled on top of that, we can make that back into that overlaid look. Roll colors through all of that and get, uh, again, create some very cool effects. And then like I said, if you need a wash effect, it's built in with that frost. You drop the frost in over your spot effect and it gives you a very nice even wash. Uh, so if you do need to cover space, it's no problem. Looking at a combination of some wash and spot effects, right now we're looking at um, a couple different wash lights layered up and you can see how nice and even those colors do come together. And then on top of that, uh, we do have a, a spot fixture with a prism engaged, uh, rolling a couple gobos. Uh, this creates a nice textured look. Uh, this is great for applications where you need to build um, a really cool look for an entrance or something like that. Uh, this is looking at just two fixtures. Uh, this is a wash and a spot overlay. Dropping an animation wheel on top of an overall effect just to build a bigger textured look. And then just animation. This is an animation, frost, and static gobo combination. And then that same thing, just taking the frost out, and you can see how that effect changes a little bit. But the idea here is to show how well multiple fixtures can work together. So after seeing what these fixtures all do and how they perform, let's take a look at how they best fit your situation. 
For smaller rooms and events, you don't need a whole lot of features in your fixtures to be able to do good coverage. Chevy Professional offers rogue R1X and R2X wash and spots, which are perfect for covering events like this. Using spot and wash combinations, like you would get with the R1X, R2X wash and spots, is going to give you enough flexibility to make every event planner happy for smaller rooms, especially if you're using custom gobos. Custom gobos look great in the rogue spots because they have an extremely flat field, so getting a great focus on your entire logo is very easy. And the same kit can be used if there's a cocktail hour or a house band playing after the event is over. Smaller church lighting kits will be similar to small ballroom and event style kits when it comes to gear. I would suggest staying with a Rogue R2X wash for your overall coverage, and if you don't need a zooming spot fixture, the Rogue R2X or Rogue R1X spot will cover your build, especially if you're going to use custom gobos. Uh, these fixtures are perfectly fitted for custom gobos as the field is really flat. So if you're using a logo gobo, it's going to look really good. If you don't need CMY color mixing, then the Rogue R3 spot is going to cover your needs really well if you do need a little bit of zoom. Rogues are great for installation as they're very reliable and have a solid return on investment. Oftentimes, medium-sized events require IMAG. These are events that would include a camera shoot, uh, for either for internal, internal usage, just for the iMag, or they're being recorded for playback or live stream. These events might require a little more horsepower than the smaller events. You're still typically using ground support rather than flying gear typically in events like this, so weight is often a concern. When it comes to events like this, scenic lighting is also oftentimes a design consideration. For wash lights, I would still suggest the R2X wash or R3X wash. Because you're going to need the coverage and output to cover the stage effectively, as well as covering scenic elements like spandex or atomic type structures, you really need to have something that's going to give you the output. But you also need to think about weight. Uh, the Rogue fixtures are still pretty lightweight. Uh, they're easily rigged to ground support towers. Uh, you can also take a look at the Rogue R2X Wash VW as a key light fixture for covering any, any speakers in the event. This fixture has a really high CRI and color temperature presets that are built into the fixture. Uh, the presets range from 2800 degrees Kelvin all the way up to 6000 degree Kelvin in 200 degree increments. This makes it super easy to set the fixture up. If you're looking for hard edge effects, uh, which are going to be more important in events like this, uh, you need to think about um, how the logos are going to look when you focus them. Uh, that's why I would still suggest using a fixture like the R3 uh, spot because it does have the ability to project gobos really nicely um, and it does have zoom. If you do need CMY color mixing, I would take a look at the MK1 spot. Uh, it's still a lightweight fixture, but it gives you CMY color mixing, great gobo features, as well as a great focus and zoom range. If the event requires a little extra sparkle, then adding in some beam lights above and below your video screens is going to look really slick. These can be used to blast out over the audience and create some very cool effects in the air and on the ceiling of the room. You could also use hybrids uh, for this kind of stuff as they work well as both beams and spots to give you a few more design options. The looks you're creating with these beams and hybrids might also lend themselves to having a few hazers in the room as well, especially for the camera to pick up those beam effects. It's the same basic idea for a medium-sized church as it is for a medium-sized event. The only real difference would be rigging. Typically in a church, it's an installation package as opposed to a temporary package. If you're shooting iMag or recording playback and live stream, the same fixtures for medium-sized events will still come into play. The other real exception might be the need for a higher CRI key light. In this case, adding a fixture like the Maverick MK2 profile to your front light package uh, would be ideal. Uh, we like to look at that because the MK2 profile fixture uh, is a higher CRI LED, which is perfect for key light. In this situation, you still get all the gobo and color options you'd be getting from the MK1 or MK2 spot, but you also have the ability to do framing effects, and again, that higher CRI is going to look great on camera. For larger events, where you're planning on not only having camera iMag and recording, but you're also planning on rigging truss from the ceiling, then having more powerful fixtures with longer throw distances need to be taken heavily into consideration. Typically, for larger events like this, budget has already been put into place for a fixture package that has all the bells and whistles. So for wash lights, you're going to need to cover a lot of area. 
So you're going to need to have fixtures that have got great power and coverage and zoom angles. In this case, I would suggest moving up to the MK2 and MK3 washes. These lights are designed to deliver lots of light to surfaces of whatever you're trying to cover. Also with these lights, you have the added bonus of individual pixel control and a very wide zoom range. Within that range is the ability to go very narrow. That narrow beam gives you the ability to do some very cool color and texture effects that play well in environments like this. These are great for both front of house and for on stage positions and are really versatile. For gobo and hard edge effects, moving up to the MK3 spot in profile might be a really good choice. These fixtures both have built in CRI flags that boost the CRI up from the mid 70s to just over 90 to give you great color rendering, which is perfect for key light applications. These fixtures are designed to work together, so using the profiles for situations where you need framing and the spots where you don't need framing gives you a little bit of added extra versatility in your rig and keeps the color and output consistent, which will look great on camera. As events like this are in big rooms, filling up the room with cool air effects becomes really important. This is where you'll be relying heavily on beams and hybrids. Positioning these fixtures throughout the rig will give you great coverage and is going to add a lot of spark to your show. Putting them in your upstage truss will be really effective for creating over and into the, the audience looks that will also look really stunning on camera. These lights also make great ground fixtures, both upstage and downstage, to create more beam and prism effects throughout the entire space. So to kind of wrap it all up into a bow, uh, the whole key here is right application for right fixture. It's all about matching the job with the light or the light with the job. Uh, within the Maverick and Rogue family, there's always going to be stuff that fits your application for exactly what you're looking for. It's all about just figuring out the size, um, size of job versus size of fixture and the feature sets you're looking for. If you guys do have any more questions, please go ahead and send those on in to us. We're going to hang out for a few minutes after the feed's over. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, for more information, check us out on the web at showvayprofessional.com. And for Tech Talk, my name is Mike Graham, and thanks for watching.